I'll I'm, press. Okay. Please get it out. If you're asleep, could you wake up right now? I'm not gonna let you sleep today. Either. I know this is hard times. Hard preacher, right? Hey, you need a hard preacher in hard times, right? And you need the word of God, so no sleeping. This is the time to wake up and listen. This is it. If you can listen today, all I need is like, let me have 15 minutes of your time. Can I have that? 15 minutes? Now this, I heard there was a good sermon last week. I was really surprised. Without me here, I, I'm surprised. But the message, I heard about the message, it says like, wow, we're on the same page. So I'm going to talk about that a little bit because we heard some good preaching on our travels. Went to a few good churches. You know what they're preaching right now? Well, if, if you're a mega church, you're preaching prosperity, which is a lie against the Word of God. That's right. But I was in some churches that are preaching the Word of God. You know what they were preaching about? End times. They were preaching about the tribulation. They were preaching about rumors of wars. They were preaching about people killing people just for no reason. Just because they're a different color or a different religion. There's no peace they were preaching about. But you know, one day there will be peace. Huh. That's what we'll talk about. So maybe, maybe we open the door up and show you that this is prophecy. You, you might disregard the Word of God. The professionals or the scientists disregard the Word of God. But why is it what's happening today is in the Word of God? Why is that? Because God's trying to tell us something. He's trying to prepare us for something. And if you're not prepared, if you're not ready, you're going to lose. You're going to lose this race. If you've got to get your head out of the sand, so to speak, is what the preachers have been saying. Why and how can a little country like Israel not be overthrown like that? Why couldn't they just wipe it out? Well, the Bible says they can't. It's only God can wipe it out. Only if God lifts his hand up from there. Now, yes, it, through history, it looks like he did lift his hand when they were uh, slaves in Egypt. It does look like he lifted his hand when, when Hitler had his reign of terror over the Jews. But they were never wiped off the map. That little country has never been taken or wiped off the map. There's a reason why. The Bible says why. And if you're not going to, if you're just going to sit there and say, well, I don't care. I don't care. That's the wrong attitude. You need to change that today. So let's talk about it. Let's uh, turn your Bible. Second Peter. Turn your Bible to Second Peter. Now, this shouldn't be a surprise to you. If you've been to our church before, you're going to hear from the Word of God. You're going to hear the truth. Now, if you've been here for a while and you don't have your Bible, I, I would just like you to listen. Listen intently. Because what I'll share with you is from the Word of God. It's not my opinion. It's not some man's opinion. It's not some scientist's opinion. It, it's what God's opinion. That's what counts. This is what God has set up. And I hope that you would understand and be ready. So here's the title of the message. It's Ready, Set, Go. Boy, I've heard that before, haven't you? Some of you that's been in relay races, somebody that's, uh, if, you, if you were really bored and you watched some of the Olympics when they do all that stuff, I mean, that, who was that guy, the Bolt uh, from Jamaica, right? That dude was fast, and so far they haven't found uh, uh, steroids or any some, some kind of enhancement that makes you stronger. So right now it looks like he's the fastest in the world. Right now it looks like he's the fastest human that's ever lived. He's, he had broke all the records of, of races. But you know, he, yes, speed is a God-given thing that he has. Obviously, he's really fast. But you know where his preparation is? It's in training. And do you know that it's all about how you prep for it? Do you know that? It's all about the start. Do you understand when they say ready, you got to be ready. When they say set, you got to be set. And when they say go, you got to be gone. I mean gone. So you got to be ready, set, go. Are you ready for the race that we are to run here? Are you ready for this race that God has given us to run? We're all in a race, some form or another. Some are faster or slower than others. But we all should be on a race. And, you know, it's not always how you start, but it's how you finish. And if you're going to finish this race on the right side, well, you have to finish, first of all, but you need to be saved. If you don't know Christ your Savior, then you've lost already. 
If you do not know, if you die right now, that you would go to heaven, then you have lost the race already. But you could be a winner today. <laughs> you could start out on that race. You could start running. You could start winning if you accept Christ as your Savior today. Now, when I say about winning, when I say about racing, it's not about prosperity. It's about God's blessing. It's about God's intervention on sin. It's God's price that he paid on the cross of Jesus Christ. That's the blessing that we give, and, and that's what I want to receive, and that's what you should receive today. You want to run this race. There's always a way to do it. Now, I need uh, somebody to illustrate for me. All right. You guys, can you come in pairs, or can you wander out? Hey, anybody else? Anybody else? Anybody else? Anybody else? I just need one. And the guy with the tie that's not tight. Now, have you run a race before? I'm not running. You never ran a race. Anybody? Okay, I should have started out. Who's a runner? I mean, I mean fast. I mean, fast. I, I mean now who who can who all right, who's run the hundred before? Well, how, how many seconds? I don't know. Sit down. How many seconds can you run the, the, the 100? <laughs> I'm looking for a number. Huh? Ten? Twenty-four. How about the 40-yard dash? How many has ever run that 40? Oh, All right, who's really fast? I want to use a guy. Come on, HCO, come on up. Come on up, come on up. He looks like a runner, too. Because Asian Bolt's like the same height. All right, now stand right here. Now, let's say you're in a race, right? You got the handgun out. Well, they're not going to shoot you with it, all right? You know? They pull the gun out, and then what do they say? Can you show us what position you get in to be ready? Are you? Okay. All right. This is we're running to 40. Everybody ready? All lanes ready. Say, ready. Ready. Set. Go. Just like that. <laughs> we'll do that again right here. Now, now do it over here, and you got to run to the wall, okay? All right. All right. They say, all right, you're ready. Okay, ready, set. <laughs> now you would get in trouble for that, wouldn't you? Yeah. So you got to be ready, set. You got to pay attention. You got to be ready. So when they say ready, let's try this again. Ready, set, go. <laughs> All right. He showed some speed there, man. That's pretty good. How many seconds did that take? About twenty, right? That was pretty good. So. <laughs> Now look, they're serious about that. If you don't get ready right, they disqualify you. If you're not set, they disqualify you. And when they say go, you're not ready, you lose. You know, it was kind of funny to kind of see them mess up. That was funny, but you know what? You don't want to mess up on this one. You don't want to mess up on this race. But when, when the Word of God says ready, the Word of God says set, and when the Word of God says go, are you going to be ready? That's how we should be standing right now. It shouldn't be like this. Hey guys, you got your pants down, you can't run like this. You gotta keep those pants up, right? You gotta be ready. So when they say ready, some of you probably have to do that. You know? Well, wait a minute. Wait a minute, Lord, let me get my pants up. I'm ready now. Well, wait, wait, let me type the ball up. But look, you should be ready. Amen. You should be set. Amen. You should be ready to go. So let's get into the Word of God today. How about 2 Peter chapter 3? And I'm going to go through a lot of scripture. We're going to get moving here. We're, going to, we're just going to roll through this. Uh, I thank Brother Tim for setting it up last week. So now we know the end of the world's coming. We know there's a lot of crazy things out there happening. Now it's like, well, what, what do I do? What, what direction do I go? Where do, how do I do this? How do I run this race? And that's what we're going to cover today. Now, 2 Peter chapter 3, verses 4, and I'm going to read down here. I want you to pay attention. If you, even if you don't have a Bible, just listen to the words of God, what he's saying to us today. It's such a great thing. This is a great setup, and, and let's, let's get to it. All right, verse 4, 2 Peter chapter 3. It says, And saying, Where is the promise of his coming? For since the fathers fell asleep, all things continue as they were from the beginning of the creation. For this they willingly are ignorant of that by the word of God. The heavens were of old, and the earth standing out of the water and in the water, whereby the world that then was being overflowed with water perished. 
But the heavens and the earth which are now, by the same word, are kept in store, reserved unto fire against the day of judgment and perdition of ungodly men. And it says in verse 8, But beloved, be not ignorant of this one thing, that one day is with the Lord as a thousand years, and a thousand years as one day. The Lord is not slack concerning his promise, as some men count slackness, but is long-suffering to usward, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. Verse 10, But the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night, in the which the heavens shall pass away with a great noise, and the elements shall melt with fervent heat. The earth also and the works that are therein shall be burned up. Verse 11, seeing then that all these things shall be dissolved, what manner of persons ought ye to be in all holy conversation and godliness, looking for and hasting unto the coming of the day of God, wherein the heavens being on fire shall be dissolved, and the elements shall melt with fervent heat. Nevertheless, we, according to his promise, look for new heavens and a new earth wherein dwelleth righteousness. Verse 14. Wherefore, beloved, seeing that ye look for such things, be diligent that ye may be found of him in peace without spot and blameless. Now, there was a lot of scripture reading, but wow. It really set up the end times, didn't it? It really set up the what? The, the return of Christ. So what I'm asking you today, are you ready for the return of Christ? Are you set for the return of Christ? And are you ready to go today? Are you ready to meet Jesus Christ as your Savior? Are you ready to stand before God, a holy God? Are you ready to stand before judgment? Are you in the book of life? Are you ready? Are you set? Are you ready to go? That's the question I'm going to ask you today. And I hope that it breaks your heart and burns deep and makes you realize that maybe the direction you're going is the wrong way. Maybe what you are doing today is wrong just because maybe a family has done it or maybe a friend has done it. Well, I'm telling you today, it's either God's way or no way. It's either God's race or you're not racing, you're losing. And I want you to be on the winning side today. So my question to you, are you ready to go? Now listen. Are you ready? Either this is two ways to get to heaven. It's by rapture. If the Lord would return, would you be ready to go? Would you be able to say, I'm saved and I know it. I'm a Christian. I identify with Christ. Here I am, Lord. Take me and he will take you in the rapture. Are you ready for the rapture? We hear all through life that it'll never happen, just like the verse in here saying, it says, where is the promise of your coming? You're never going to come and get us. Jesus is not real. He's not coming to get us. We're left here alone. You have people that say that. And then you have the ones that say he's going to be here in May 22nd. So if he's going to be here in May 22nd, are you ready to go? Are you ready to meet Jesus Christ today? If he does come 2012, like they're saying, are you ready to meet Christ? But we don't know the day the Lord's coming. We do not know. He'll come as a thief in the night. We'll never know. Then they say that man cannot know only Jesus Christ himself. Only God himself will know when he'll come back. Now you're sitting there, well, it's been over 2,000 years since Jesus died. Well, it's been 6,000 years since the world was created. Or evolutionists say it's been, what's the number now? Billions of years now. <laughs> I just laugh at just hearing that. It's like McDonald's, you know. Pretty soon McDonald's will be served over 100 million, how many hundred million McNuggets that people are going to eat. And it goes up every year. Just like the evolutionists, they don't know. They have no clue because they don't know who God is. They know nothing of God. They want nothing to do with God because it'll prove that they're a sinner. It would prove that they're wrong. It would prove that God is the only, only authority. Now, they've been asking for years when God's coming back. We don't know. It could be today. It could be tomorrow. It could be tonight. It could be right now. But if not, if he doesn't come, are you ready to go? Are you ready? If he were to come today, if he were to knock at your door and say, let's go to heaven, would you be able to go? Would you be able to say, let's go? Let's get moving. I want to go to heaven. Would you be able to say that? And I know that question sometimes makes people think, am I really saved? Do I really know Christ as my Savior? I hope that makes you ask that today. I'm not trying to get you to doubt your salvation or scare anybody. And you'll hear this from here. I'm not trying to scare you, but prepare you. And that's what God wants to do. He wants to prepare you. Are you ready to go? In Hebrews, 
if you, if you want to turn there, you don't have to, but Hebrews 9, 26, 28, it says this. It, I'm just going to read verse 27 and 28. It says, And it is appointed unto man once to die. And that's man, woman, once to die, but after this, the judgment. So Christ once offered to bear the sins of many, and unto them that look for him shall he appear the second time without sin unto salvation. So if you're saved today and you know Jesus Christ as your Savior, well, that shows you that you're ready. You're ready. You're looking for Christ. You, you want Him to return. And, and as much as I want to live life and have a, have a good time and, and make friends and, and do things in this life, but it's nothing to do if Christ would want to come back or, or take me home, then I'm ready. I'm ready to go because I want to go. I want to see God. I want to see heaven. I want to see God in all His glory. I want to see that one day. But in the meantime, if we're waiting on the rapture and what that means, if you don't die on this earth, if you don't die and the Lord comes back, He'll take you home with Him. He'll be a rapture and the dead in Christ will rise first and then you'll be caught up in the heavens. And in a twinkling of an eye, that's even quicker than a blink. That's quicker than just the, all you have to do is turn your eye and you're in heaven. That's the rapture. I, I want to be part of that rapture. I, I want to I do that. I'd rather be raptured than die, wouldn't you? I mean, some of you probably say, I'd rather die. <laughs> no way. I don't want to die of some incurable disease or, or, or something, an accident or tragedy, which, you know, is possible because of this, this life and this world of sin. But, but I would rather go in rapture. I'd rather go in the hands of Jesus. I'd rather go face to face with Jesus. And you could too today if you knew Christ as your Savior. If you could say, I'm saved without a shadow of a doubt if the Christ would come back now, I would be in heaven. I would be face to face with Jesus. If you could say that, then you are ready to meet Christ. But not everybody's ready. Not everybody's ready. Now we think about it. So we understand that we got to answer to God for everything we do. It's appointed unto men once to die. Man, woman, die. And after this is the judgment. What do you have to show for it? You're ready. You say you're ready. You say you're saved. You say you got all this going, but what are you doing for Christ? Anything? Are you doing anything? Are you just sitting back saying... This is okay for me. Just coming to church is okay. But you know what? If you're not saved and if you're not ready, you're not set. It's a waste of time. You're wasting your time. Man, how about when you come to church? Man, accept Jesus as your Savior. Know Christ as your Savior. You come to church, how about doing something for God? You always hear that cliche, don't just sit there. Do something. I've always loved that. Even as a kid when I heard that, he made that silly face, though. I won't make that face. But, man, don't just sit there. Do something. Are you ready? Are you set? You know, if you turn your bottles to Titus, I'm not asking everybody to turn right say because it's a lot of Scripture. Now listen to Titus. Titus chapter 2, verse 12 through 14. Now I ask you, are you ready? So you've got to know Christ your Savior. That's how you know you're ready. And then secondly, are you set? Now listen to this. It says um, Titus chapter 2. And there's a lot of scripture to read, but listen to the 12 through 14. Teaching us that denying ungodliness and worldly lust, we should live soberly, righteously, and godly in this present world. Looking for that blessed hope and the glorious appearing of a great God and our Savior, Jesus Christ, who gave himself for us that he might redeem us from all iniquity and purify with himself as peculiar people, zealous of good works. Now, I didn't say weird people. <laughs> I didn't say idiots. <laughs> you know what I mean? A peculiar person is a good thing. That means you stand out in a good way. You stand out in favor of God and not man. That's what you should be looking for. I don't want to I don't want to be popular with man. I want to be popular with God. Amen. I want to be popular with Jesus Christ because that's the one that's who and that's who I have to answer to and and answer my my judgment to God. So why try to please man? You don't have to answer to them. You have to answer to God. So, are you set? How's your church attendance? Are you set on that? Or you only come when Mama makes you? I, I asked you that question today. Did Mama make you come? And you're like, no. Mama, save the drama for your Mama. That's what you said to me. So, your dad didn't make you come? Your, your brother or sister didn't? Well, what do you say? Your brother made you come. 
You came to church on your own, didn't you? I wanted to be in church. Well, why don't you make that a priority in your life? Because if you're ready to go, then you should be set in church. You should be set in a seat. You should be set on a bus when you come here. How about, how about the, the Bible? Bible reading. If this is the only time, I praise the Lord that we have Bible time here. But if this is your only time, then it's powerless in your life, in a sense. Yeah, maybe one day it'll click when you're, when you're falling apart and, and living in sin and, and on your last the thread of the rope, maybe it'll, it, you'll, the Word of God will grab you then, but why not get set right now? Why not set right now? Uh, Bible, pray. How about pray? When's the last time you prayed the right way to the Heavenly Father in Jesus' name? Not, you know, we visited a college and, you know, a lot of them, oh, I only studied an hour. Lord, please help me on the test. Well, you're not redeeming the time. I'm sorry. You're on your own. And that's a noble request. I guess I'm not a college kid. I'm far removed from that. Uh, maybe when I was a college kid, I would have prayed for Lord's mercy on my ignorance, of course. But it's too late. How about just praying without ceasing? Praying all the time. Man, maybe it's your requests aren't the end of the world, but Lord, please help me to be faithful. How about... Um, College, where are you planning to go to school at? Are you going to go to a party school where you can do what you want, live how you want? You're wasting your time and money. You know that as a Christian. There's some good colleges I saw this weekend. Some good colleges I saw this week that if you went there with the right attitude, God changed your life. I don't care what one of the colleges, I don't care. Just to see you want to go to a college would be... And they, they have it set up to where you don't have to wait for government grants or nothing. And you can get down there and, and get in school. You don't have to wait for handouts. Man, go down there and earn it. Be responsible. Work for it. It will mean much more to you. Now you have opportunity in the family. Are they set? Friends, are they set? And here we go. I want to go. 1 Thessalonians, if you turn there, 1 Thessalonians. Now, if you're ready, if you're set, you should be able to say, let's go. Because there's nothing that you're going to achieve in this life that's going to be better than what God has for us. Really, I'm just telling you right now. Some of you are thinking you're going to change the world. I mean, wait, that'd be great if you become president. Great. But if you're not able to say, Lord, come quickly. If you're not able to say, Lord, I'm ready, then we need to check ourselves before we wreck ourselves, pretty much. 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verses 16 through 18. Listen up. Listen to this. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. Wherefore, comfort one another with these words. Not only do I want to set up that you need to be saved, and then secondly, you're going to be in a judgment seat in Christ. Will you be ready for that? But are you set serving the Lord? Are you set doing something for God? And then are you ready to go? Because if that would cry, it would come right now. And sometimes they do this in the church service. They have like a, a person with a trumpet. And they would blow that trumpet real loud. And, and sometimes they would scare people that were sitting there. I remember as a kid, they would do that. You'd just be like this, you know. they say, oh, I want to hear the trumpet. And all of a sudden, somebody would come out and blow that trumpet. And yet, maybe sometimes you might think, oh, here he goes. He's going to blow the trumpet. But it would do something. In the trumpet, we'd only hear in the church. But you imagine the trumpet heard all over the world. Hear a trumpet and, and, and to watch a, your Christians go to heaven. And you're standing there not saved, not ready, not set. And when the horn would blow, you would watch your Sunday school teacher or your mom or your dad or a friend go to heaven. And you would be left behind. What a great tragedy it would be. Because weeks after weeks you sat under the gospel of Christ. Days after days you've heard preaching on the truth, the doctrine of Jesus Christ. 
And all you had to do was call upon the name of the Lord and be saved. All you had to do was look to Jesus and be saved. And you never did it. And you have no way, you can't blame nobody except yourself in the end. And you hear that trumpet. Twinkle of an eye. We should all be going together. A happy family. A peaceful family. In the arms of Jesus. And, and I, I, it's real simple today. Are you ready? Are you saved today? You died right now, where would you go? Only you can answer that. A lot of people say, hey, Mr. Palmer, I've been coming to this church for six years. That doesn't save you. You know, hell's paved with good intentions. I've been, I've been, well, I didn't smoke. Well, I didn't drink. I didn't hang with the girls that do. That's not going to get you out. It's only if you accept Jesus Christ as your Savior. That's the only way to secure the end. When I hear that trumpet, I want to meet the Lord. And Revelations, at the end of the book, chapter, John, we're seeing a lot of stuff. It's possible that he's got close to God. Too close, in a sense. That he asked the Lord to come quickly. If you can't say that, you should be ready to go. Why would you not want to go to heaven? <laughs> you know, if you never accept Christ your Savior, obviously you'll miss the rapture. You'll, when you die, you'll just die and go to hell. I wouldn't want that to happen. It'd be a tragedy. Would it be that we hear the trumpet, we'd all go together? It'd be great. So what are you doing in the meantime? Are you ready? saved? you know Christ you're saved? Are you set? What are you doing for the Lord? Other than coming to church on Sunday morning, I'm not putting that down. But what do you do? If this is all you do, then we're having a rough time. And you should want to change. You should want to see Christ face to face. And John says, surely, Lord, come quickly. <coughs> And then he said, even so, come. Just, just get here. I'm ready. I'm ready. <laughs> well, I'd love to experience a lot, lot more blessings in life, I'm sure. Love to see my daughter grow up, do something great for God. I'd love to do something great for God. But if his call would come down, sorry. <laughs> I'm out of here. See you later, alligator. Are you ready to meet Christ? And you say right now, I'm ready to meet Christ. If you can't see him face to face, you'll see the, you'll see the back of God. Because if you don't honor him and accept him as your father, he, he turns his back on you. Because you never accepted Christ as your Savior. Don't let that be you. Don't let the, you be the one left behind. Because you just never listened. Don't be the ones that just live, live their life any way they want. So today you can be ready, you can be set, and what do they say? Let's go, right? Let's pray. Dear Father, thank you for this time that we've had, Lord. Lord, there might be somebody that's not saved today. But Lord, we're always um, looking, searching, seeking the lost, Lord. But Lord, we have a lot of kids that have been coming for a long time to church. And I just like to see them follow through on that. That they would do something great for God. That they wouldn't just wait, Lord, and, and just not do anything for you.